So this is probably not a situation that you need a prolonged introduction to. Uh, just rounding out a truly tremendous Copa America, the Argentine national team, which managed to scrape a win uh, over Colombia to bring home the title, a second consecutive Copa America, which of course makes Argentina the most awarded Copa America winner of all time, passing Uruguay. Uh, it also gives Lionel Messi his, his third major international trophy in three consecutive major international tournaments, and it turns undoubtedly this Argentine national team into one of the great national team sides of the last 30 to 40 years, winning three straight major international tournaments. But, of course, after the game, they're on the bus, they're celebrating, and there's this song. This song that has existed since the World Cup, that was the first time that I heard about it. There was like an interview with a couple of Argentine fans. I would assume that other Argentine fans kind of sang, uh, sang this song at various points during the World Cup. And of course, Argentina ended up going against France. And, and if you ask Argentine people, not all Argentine people, right? if you ask, I would, I would imagine the people that are singing the song, they believe it to be a banter song against France like that's that that's the perception of this song that it is somehow that it, it's a song that is basically like you know shit talking essentially it is a banter song against France and that and that's all it is well here here you go here are the lyrics to the song because this is the song that's being sung on the bus uh by and just to be clear about like who is actually singing this now I don't want to like indict everybody on the bus of having sung this because we've all been in, let's say, a larger group of people that maybe we've disagreed with what that larger group of people was doing, uh, but, you know, you're, you're just kind of in that, you, you, you know, you end up guilty by association. So I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, throw everybody that was on this Argentine bus celebrating this kind of in the same boat, right? But the person that was recording it was Enzo Fernandez, and here's, like, a screenshot. Obviously, I'm not going to play the song for you, but here's a screenshot of, uh, uh, of, of Enzo on what I believe was an Instagram live uh, and there were three people that weren't on the bus. So this tweet initially said that there were six. Lionel Messi, Alexi McAllister, Julian Alvarez, Emmy Martinez, uh, Nico Otamendi, and Lotaro Martinez. The note adds that Julian Alvarez, Emmy Martinez, and Lotaro Martinez were all on the bus. So basically it was Messi, Otamendi, and McAllister were the, the, the only people that were part of this Argentine team that weren't on the bus a bus that was pretty rapturously singing this song. And, I, and I'm actually, like, this is the translation... I've confirmed, you, know, you look it up to a bunch of different places, this is basically what the song says. Uh, and there's going to be some language in here that I will try to edit, right? But you'll be able to see it here. Uh, Listen, spread the word. They play for France, but they are all from Angola. How nice. We are going to make them run like that. And uh, that, that transsexual fucker, Mbappe, uh, his mom is Nigerian, his dad is Cameroonian, but in the documents nationality France so that's the chant that, that's the song that they're singing on the bus and I mean broadcasting this willingly is just kind of an insane move I mean when this chant was first made public when I first saw it it was through the lens of everybody being like yo that chant's racist they should probably stop chanting that that's just that's just not a nice you know, like, I, I get that the idea of shit talking, like the idea of, of chance not necessarily supposed to be nice, right? There are chants where you're trying to get under somebody's skin and this and that and everything. But when this chant came out, right, of all of the chants, everybody was like, ah, that's racist. You probably shouldn't do that. So for Enzo Fernandez to be like willingly broadcasting this just immediately struck me as it, this is just a dumb thing to do like is Enzo is Enzo a dumb person I don't know I didn't see his test scores but this is just objectively a stupid thing to do if you're going to be an idiot right be an idiot in private like he, he doesn't even see the potential ramifications maybe he's had a few too many beers but there's honestly the bus like I think going back to the hotel after the game or something I mean this is not you know there hasn't been an opportunity to pound like eight shots of vodka before you you know get on stage like Mark Kukurea and start singing about paella right like this is on a bus pretty soon after you've actually won the entire tournament you're singing this song and and broadcasting it out for the world but now that you know what this I mean obviously they're singing in Spanish uh translated to English now that you know what the song actually says this sparked like this really, in my opinion, kind of bad faith, kind of idiotic argument that started to go back and forth. Because obviously a lot of people saw this and were immediately like, yo, Enzo, that's fucked up. Like, this is, 
this is obviously racist. Like, this is not a cool thing to be doing at all. You probably, I don't know, shouldn't do that. Among those people were his actual teammates, uh, right? Multiple teammates uh, at Chelsea of Enzo Fernandez. You've got Jules Koundé, who quotes it and say, it says lamentable, which, like, I, I assume that's in French, but I really, you really don't even need to translate that to understand what he's saying with the clown emojis and the vomiting emoji. David Datro Fafana also made a post. The post says, the football that I like is multi-ethnic. Racism in all of its forms should be contemned in the strongest possible terms. Wesley Fafana made a pretty similar post as well. I mean, you had multiple, multiple teammates that Enzo Fernandez shares a locker room with uh, that were, I, I want to say to various degrees, offended and or disgusted by the chant and the fact that Enzo and his teammates uh, were singing it. The thing is, that wasn't the only kind of wave of reaction. There were some there, there, there were some other reactions like this one. Enzo Fernandez getting canceled and called racist for saying Mbappe and most of France's players are of African origin. Can someone please explain to me how that is racism? People are so sensitive these days, man. I, I mean... It requires about five seconds of critical thinking to understand why this chant is racist in the first place, right? Because the, the the whole point, right? Like if if you are singing a song to try and deride your opponent, then to, then what you are singing in that song is supposed to be a detractor. It is supposed to be something bad about that opponent, right? Like if you're talking shit, then what you're saying while you're talking shit is supposed to be bad. And this is a song that is supposed to be talking shit about France and what they bring up in every line except for one which talks about Mbappe's sexual predilections has to do with the fact that the players on France's team are of African origin, right? Like that, it is being derisive and it is focusing on that fact, right? Like it, it, like it is one thing for it to be a fact because it is. Of the, uh, the majority of the members of the French national team have some African descent, right? That, that is a fact, right? But there is a difference between a fact and talking shit. And using somebody's race to talk shit is racist. I mean, it, like, it, just, it just is a very, very basic level. Like, there is a difference here, right? They're not singing about the fucking weather. Right? They're not singing about the fact that Antoine Griezmann spent his formative years in the Basque country. Right, They are trying to be derisive to France by singing about the African origin of a good number of the French national team players. Right, like there, it, I feel like it is very easy to understand that and understand why this is a racist, racist chant. I feel like some of these people are like they're trying to, they're trying, like you, you can overthink this sort of thing, right? You, you, you can overthink it. Like, I don't see anything offensive about a song or a chant the Argentine squad sang. Can't even have a little fun without people getting offended. Is that why you're dragging Enzo? I mean, I mean, there's a difference between having a little fun and just being racist. And I don't see any way around this chant just objectively being racist, right? It, it just is. If you're, if you're saying that it's Bance, then the Bance and the damn chant are the fact that the French team is all of African origin. Right, like that is what you, you, you're, you are inherently saying that that is a negative thing. If you are calling this Bance, which this person repeatedly does as they go through their replies, calling it Bance. And, and, and if you're saying, oh, I'm just having a little fun, right? Well, clearly a lot of Enzo Fernandez's teammates don't believe, right, that this is having a little fun, right? And then they are certainly not alone. There's a significant portion of the, uh, of the, world going population that when first encountering this chant in 2022 was like yo that's kind of fucked up right and, and so if you're having a little fun and a bunch of other people think it's fucked up it might be at least it, it might be at least a good thing to explore why but my personal favorite response was probably along this line it is a video of Enzo Fernandez celebrating with Wesley Fafana as if the, the just the act of celebrating with a a black player is somehow like it means that you can't possibly be racist, right? Like it is mind blowing as it may be for people to try and understand. It is possible to have racial prejudice and also like interact with people of that race that you have racial like prejudice against, 
right? Do I think that Enzo Fernandez is like the, the, the president of the KKK and he's frothing at the mouth? Like he is just, he can't wait to just say the N word repeatedly. Like, no, no, I don't think that's Enzo Fernandez. But I do believe that if you are joyously participating in this chant, that you do have some racial prejudice in your mind because you are using the idea of African origin is something derogatory, right? Like that, that, that's just what's going on there. Now, I, I think that if you can be in a position, depending on where you were raised and what culture you were surrounded with, that you, you were instilled with those kinds of racial prejudices is maybe you haven't like had, had it really exposed to you. Like, oh shoot, I probably shouldn't be singing that song because a lot of my teammates don't like it. Now I'm not an inside Enzo Fernandez's head or any of the other Argentine players. I can't tell you if they actually had one of those moments or if his first, if his comic sans apology was just something that was forced by his agent and PR team and he doesn't actually believe it at all. Although I do believe that the comic sans is a particularly bold choice for an apology post on Instagram. That, but that, you know, that's a separate Zealandism. That's not necessarily this one. But this whole concept, there's another video going around of Enzo Fernandez like playing peekaboo with, I think it's one of his teammates' kids, but it's basically, you know, it's a, a, a black kid, basically. He's playing peekaboo with him. And, and you're just sitting there watching that. It's like, yeah, Enzo Fernandez seems like he can be a great guy in certain points. And there are a lot of the other guys on that Argentine team bus are capable of being great guys. Like, they're not all just, you know, frothing at the mouth racist assholes. But you can have that pre... Like, just because of what you're around or what you believe or what you've been exposed to through media or culture or your home life or whatever, you can have that kind of racial prejudice. And that is what... It, that, like, that is what's going on here. I think a, a lot of people are overthinking this. They're like, well, it's a fact. And it's... I uh, go back to what I was saying earlier. Like they could be say, you know, you don't sing bants in like a chant against one of your rivals and, and, and choose just random facts. Like the capital is Paris, right? And that is, by the way, where like N'Golo Kante was born just feels relevant. But I do get it. Like I do actually understand where some of these people are coming from with this response because when you do and or see something that you believe to be okay, and that a bunch of other people show up and tell you that it's not, and they bring receipts and they give you reasons as to why it's not, right? It, it, that is uncomfortable. It is, in, it's like against human nature almost to be able to accept that. You have to like override your own system. I know this has happened to me, right? I, I certainly grew up in an environment where certain words were very acceptable to say. And as I have progressed in YouTube and streaming over the over the last couple of years I would say those words and then I would have people that were actually very helpful that would send me DMs and be like hey you shouldn't say that word this is why and that was a very uncomfortable experience for me and there was some inertia in my own mind like oh, what are they talking about like that's totally fine for me to say they're just being soft or whatever but as you you know if, if they are willing to take the time and sit down and kind of explain why that is just not something that is okay to say in my particular experience. And eventually, if you are willing to be introspective enough and you care about other people around you, you're able to change the way that you carry yourself. It, I mean, because to be perfectly honest, does, does not singing this chant really harm you that much? I mean, other than like, unless you were a frothing at the mouth, like, well, it's free speech, brother. <laughs> you know, like, does it really harm, like, can you just come up with another Bantz chant about, like, you know, Killian Mbappe runs for days like the road runner, but, like, he, he's running to nowhere. You know, so, I don't know. I'm not great at talking shit. People are better at it than me. Just sing a different fucking song, right? If enough people are sitting here saying, like, hey, dude, that's offensive. Like, you know, in, in as long as they can provide you with actual reasons why that's offensive and that's making them uncomfortable, it is worth listening to them. And it's worth trying to understand at least where they're coming from and then trying to, you know, process that and so that you can try and have a better effect on other people going forward in the rest of the world. So like I was saying, I, I understand why people resist, like, you know, why there's this kind of pushback uh, on this, but this, this chant's bad, dude. This chant is bad. Right, and if you are calling this chant bants, the bants are the fact that the French team is 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 largely of African origin, which uh, has honestly been a touchstone for all sorts of people that want to try to bring you know like race into uh, into football. But you know, 
That it, It's something that's become a very hot topic recently. This wasn't the only incident in the last week. There was the thing going on in Italy as well. I don't know if I'm going to make a video about that. But yeah, Enzo Fernandez apologized. Chelsea also released a club statement, which I actually haven't read. Uh, it's, it's very short. I just Chelsea Football Club finds all form of discriminatory behavior completely unacceptable. We are proud to be a diverse, inclusive club where people from all cultures, communities, and identities feel welcomed. Um, yeah, I mean, this last sentence is honestly what we should strive for. Obviously, this is just PR bullshit, but uh, you know, where people from all cultures, communities, and identities feel welcome. But yeah, can somebody please write Argentina a new Bants chant? So we don't have to deal with this again. Like so, somebody that's good at writing bands, please write them a new chant. Seriously.